Is XRP Ripple really going to go to $589? This is a prediction that I have seen all over the place, both in speculations and commenting on this prediction. And you guys asked for it, so I am delivering everything you need to know about Ripple XRP less than 24 hours after the request. And we're gonna do so on this massive flow chart that I have made. We're gonna call this the holy grail of XRP Ripple. I'm really excited about this. I have spent, you don't even wanna know how many hours compiling all this. If you zoomed in a little bit on my eyes, you would see that they're starting to get bloodshot because I've sit, been sitting here for so many hours putting this thing together. So I'm really excited. If this is not, the, I say, I've said this before, if this is not the most comprehensive video on XRP that you have ever seen, you get your money back guaranteed. <laughs> I'm not charging anything, but you get your money back. Watch this video. You will understand XRP better than anyone else, basically. You'll, you'll feel like a founder of XRP after you finish this video. So let's just go ahead and hop in <laughs> the XRP Ripple flowchart. So let's get going here. What is it? Starting off with some definitions here. Ripple is a blockchain-based payment network. And then XRP is Ripple's native token built on that network. So we see this a lot with like Ether is ETH. Ether is the native token for Ethereum. DOT is the native token of Polkadot and so on. XRP is the native token of Ripple. Now, how did it start? We're just gonna do a brief introduction here and feel free to skip around if you want. I think it's really valuable to understand everything about a project before you invest it, but some people just wanna know, hey, what's the price prediction here? Feel free to skip around if you wanna skip around. It was founded by Ryan Fugger, and no, I looked it up, Mother is not his middle name. And it started as Ripple Pay in 2004. That was before Bitcoin was even a thing. And it actually didn't use any blockchain at the time, but it still had a similar goal to what its goal is right now. Then in 2012, it was sold where it was then renamed to OpenCoin and added Ledger technology. So it added that blockchain technology. And then this thing went through a bunch of different name changes. It was renamed to Ripple Labs in 2013, and then it dropped the labs in 2015 just to be Ripple as we know, know today. And it has some big goals. So let's talk about them. It wants to be the creme de la creme for uh, bank to bank transfers. But why does it want to do that? And that's because transferring money sucks. And it's actually very expensive, especially if you're trying to transfer money from a bank account in one country to another country. It gets even more complicated if there's different currencies. So zooming out here a little bit, Here's some basic expenses for domestic wires and international wires. And it's slightly different based on whether you're receiving money or sending money and your bank, but that's some averages there. And then it's not a smooth transaction. So many transfers have to go through intermediary banks. So sometimes when you're sending from one bank to another, it's not just going directly to that other bank. It has to go through multiple banks because not all banks use the same system. If there's different currencies, it has to like find this com path of commonality from one bank to another in order to complete the transaction. And each and every one of those banks, you know, they take their little fee to process that transaction, send it off to the next bank for it to finally reach the last bank and then the transfer is done. And this whole process takes quite a while as well before the funds are actually settled. Now, how is XRP going to do all of this? And they're gonna do this by being the internet of value. Now, okay, fancy pants, what do these words even mean? It's basically a place where people can instantly transfer value, eliminating the bloat, the middlemen, the issues with the current systems. It just, it's, very, it's very similar to just blockchain technology in general. It's the internet of value. So money systems are kind of dumb and this makes them smarter and more efficient. The less middlemen, the better. The faster the processing times, the better. Now, what does Ripple do and how is it different than other coins than current banking systems? So it first off allows for transaction settlements in three seconds. So we can compare this to a wire, which on average is about three days, but this can actually take potentially weeks depending on the complexity of that transfer or something like Bitcoin where it takes 10 minutes to do a transaction. So it's very, very fast transactions. We'll talk a little bit about why it's so fast later on because their consensus mechanism is different than something like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Cardano. 
and it can actually currently do 1500 transactions per second. So its TPS report is off the charts and it's so much faster than most cryptocurrencies. Something like Bitcoin is just a couple transactions per second. Something like the Visa system is more than 20,000 transactions per second, but their goal is to reach that Visa level transactions. They are far ahead of most of the competition right now at 1500 transactions per second. And their transaction fee is 10 drops. 10 drops, you say? And I say, yes, 10 of those drops. <laughs> Are you gonna tell me what a drop is? Sure, <laughs> go on then. I'm talking, I'm talking to myself at this point. <laughs> so a drop is 0.00001 XRP. So five zeros, then a one XRP is a drop. 10 drops is about a penny. It's actually less than a penny, but you know we're just gonna round it up to a penny. And then a little sidebar here, where do the fees go when you do a transaction? This is important to know, and they're actually burned. So that transaction fee disappears. You can't use that as currency anymore. And this actually means that the coin is deflationary because it both has a fixed number of coins. The, the number of coins is about 100 billion, doesn't change, and that supply is decreasing with transaction fees. So theoretically, the coin will get more valuable over time because of that deflationary pressure. Supply and demand, baby. So the current supply, like I said, is about 100 billion coins. 45 billion of those are currently in circulation and then 55 billion are locked up in escrow. Now, some people have concerns about that lock up in escrow because if they, if they were to just be released, that would flood the system and the value of the coin would go down. There has actually been talk about just basically hitting delete on that 55 billion in coins in escrow. We're not sure if that's going to happen, but there's actually been talks about that happening. And they plan on doing this all through their system Ripple Net. Now there's a lot of vocab here. Feel free to watch through this video more than once if you want to just really nail down all the terms and definitions. Ripple Net uses two different types of currencies, XRP, as you would have guessed, and IOUs, which is exactly what you think that means. It's literally an IOU. So let's talk about the IOUs first. Basically, it's a debt certificate. And it might seem a little bit foreign, but as I explained it, it, you're gonna probably connect this to multiple things that are used on a daily basis. So you issue an IOU to someone when you owe them money. If, if I owed you $20, I would issue you, you this IOU certificate for $20. You would hold it basically saying, hey, Max is going to pay me $20. Oh, and by the way, I have to announce that the Patreon is filling up. There's only about 40 spots left before this round closes completely. So make sure you join. You'll get all sorts of things like certain videos early, buy alerts, tons of super valuable stuff there. This round has a limited number of spots because I wanna make sure I do this right with the Patreon thing and serve the members properly. So make sure you join before that is completely filled up if you want a spot. Now, moving on from here on the IOU certificates, they can be traded, but they are not interchangeable. And it's really easy to think of these as something like a personal check. Now to explain how they're not interchangeable, let's do a little example here. Let's say you and I both write a personal check for $20. On that piece of paper, it says, yep, you're gonna pay $20. However, you and I have completely different credit worthiness. So it's not actually worth the exact same because you might have a much better odds of paying that $20 debt than I or vice versa because it's coming from a different source. So with these IOU certificates, you are trusting that the person who owes you money is going to pay you back. Further on this, they can be used to transact any asset from the US dollar, from Bitcoin to Chuck E. Cheese tokens, and it's all again through that honor system. So you can think of it just like a personal check. And this is an option because of XRP's volatility. The reason that this is an option is because banks, they have some risk in transacting in XRP where it stands because they don't want that final value to be far off from what the value is that they're trying to transact. I mean, this is pretty understandable. Let's think about it this way. Let's say you wanted to pay someone $100, but you wanted to make sure that it was actually $100 a week from now. Are you going to hold it in XRP? Probably not because that price could go up by a dramatic amount or down by a dr dramatic amount in one week's time. And that's exactly how banks are thinking about this. So, so the less volatile that XRP gets over time, 
the more likely banks are going to use this more and more for these transfers. Now, banks can use XRP for the transfers, and, and some do in this occasion. This is kind of what the system is built for, but they can use either of those IOUs or the XRP. And in this case, XRP is used as a link between different currencies or different banks or different types of assets. It's the linkage between. So instead of having to transfer US dollars to euros back to US dollars or something like that, it could just a bank could just transfer to XRP that transfer that XRP to another bank, and then the XR XRP would be transferred to whatever denomination the end goal is here. So with XRP, they are act transacting the actual asset because XRP is actually worth something where the IOU is just a debt certificate not actually worth anything. It, it's just basically a piece of paper, if you will. There's no counterparty risk. There's no trust needed, again, because this is an actual asset that you're giving to someone. Like It's as if you were giving someone a little nugget of gold or something like that. And then you can think of this more like a cashier's check, where the IOU is a personal check. A cashier's check, you have to pay up front for that certificate that says it's worth X amount of dollars, and that is as good as gold, if you will. And that's what the XRP transaction is like. And the more XRP is used, the more it'll be worth, because of course, supply and demand. Now, from here, can XRP be mined? Now, this is really important, the consensus mechanism that XRP uses. And the answer here is no. It's neither a proof of stake or a proof of work system. So a coin like Bitcoin uses proof of work and mining for the consensus mechanism to uphold the ledger, the public ledger, all the transactions of the system. Or a coin like ADA uses proof of stake to uphold the system and the transactions on that system. XRP uses neither, they use a UNL, a unique node list. And you can kind of think of this as a group of people that you think are not going to screw you on any kind of transaction. It's just almost like a random group of people who have to have consensus on a transaction. And generally, this is pretty safe because anyone can become a validator. The number of validators are growing every single day, and they need an 80% consensus in order to add a transaction to the actual public ledger. So this transaction gets sent out to validators, they say yay or nay on it. If 80% of them say yay, then it gets added to the public ledger and it's generally pretty safe because of that. And why would they not want to use proof of stake or proof of work? And the reason is because this is much faster. This is how they can get that 1500 transactions per second. And it's much more energy efficient because there's not these huge computers mining the coin around the clock like there is with something like Bitcoin. Then from here, Let's talk about its criticisms and its risks, because I think this is really important, and then we'll get into the price predictions after this. So first off, there's a lot of criticisms that is not decentralized like most cryptocurrencies are, like cryptocurrencies are kind of inherently intended to be. And this is kind of yes and no. It both is decentralized and kind of not decentralized at the same time. So in the not decentralized case, Ripple Labs has a ton of influence over the coin. They don't have 100% influence, but they have a ton because they hold a lot of these coins and they have a lot of power. Next, Ripple products are not open source. You can't tinker with them. You can't make your own version. They are closed source. That's the products themselves. That's not the actual coin. That's important to note. And Ripple is committed to reporting bad guys. And they do this through anti-money laundering schemes, uh, fraud detection, and regulatory reporting. They're trying to be on the side of the banks. So they do all sorts of reporting. And this is completely unlike a coin like Bitcoin. Now, they may have things about them that seem centralized, but there are also things that make them decentralized, like, like the fact that Ripple Labs cannot control a transaction once it's public. So there's a lot of debate here whether it's decentralized or centralized. I'll leave that up to you as to what you decide. Another criticism or concern is trouble with regulators. The SEC has actually recently charged Ripple with $1.3 billion in unregistered securities offerings. Basically, the SEC says that XRP is an investment contract and Ripple says, no, it's a medium of exchange, something like cash. So there's this debate here back and forth and it has not been settled officially. There has been some small wins on the side of XRP recently, but that does not mean that it'll settle 100% in their favor. So that's something important to consider. And also, of course, it is very volatile like any cryptocurrency. It can have a wild swing. It's important to root any portfolio in safe investments that are going to produce you a reliable return and then maybe have some fun money on the side. But of course, none of this is investment advice and take this all with a grain of salt because I'm not an investment advisor. Also, a side note, make sure you check out the link in the description 
description for KuCoin. That's the company that I use for pretty much all my crypto transacting at this point. I like them because they allow you to do lending, staking. They have tons of small coins that other exchanges don't have. I've really enjoyed them. And if you use that link, you save money on trading fees. So check that out if you are curious about getting a new exchange to buy and sell crypto on. So let's talk about the consensus here, the verdict. It's a system that makes sense. I mean, bank to bank transfers are a nightmare. They're expensive, they take forever. There has to be a solution here. There absolutely has to. I just don't know how soon that solution is going to happen. It addresses a multi-billion dollar issue, potentially multi-trillion dollar issue of those bank to bank transfers. So there's potentially a lot of value to be gleaned here. And that's extremely exciting if you ask me. However, banks may be slow to move because banks are making a lot of money on these transactions. And they are absolute, they are the whales of all whales. They're huge and they're making tons of money and they're, they might just say like, hey, this system's working for us. Why would we adopt this new system that we make less money on? So in the long run, this absolutely will happen. We just don't know exactly how quickly that'll happen. And that's you know part of the built-in risk here. However, they do cite that they have over 300 existing bank partners, which is extremely exciting. However, we don't know to what level banks are actually transacting with XRP. So there's a little bit of gray area there. Now, $589. Is it possible for this coin to hit $589. That would be an over 300x increase. And if, I mean, I wouldn't mind investing $1,000 and getting $300,000 in return, but is that possible? I think probably not. That would leave the coin at a $20 trillion market cap, 20x what Bitcoin is currently sitting at. And that seems pretty unreasonable and unlikely in my opinion at this case. Sure, anything can happen, but $589 seems insane. Now I have dug into why some people think $589 is possible and a lot of it has to do with technical analysis, which doesn't really figure in something like market cap or the feasibility of a $20, 20 trillion market cap. Now what is a realistic price here? After all this research, I think that XRP could very realistically hit five bucks in two to five years. And I think that's fairly conservative. I mean, that's a, a massive increase when you just talk about an investment increase, but I don't think that that's unrealistic. I see a lot of value here. I see a lot of reason to use it. Yes, there are some major risks and concerns. However, overall, I see this trending in the upwards direction in the future. And I don't think $5 is unrealistic. However, I think the road to $5 will be extremely, extremely volatile with wild swings up, up and down, especially with whatever the verdict comes out to be with the SEC case. So that's gonna do it. I hope that this helped you understand everything you need to know about XRP. Check out the links down in the description for free stocks, free crypto, the crypto exchange that I use. Join the Patreon and do all the things. Make sure you subscribe as well. Again, I would like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.